Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to start, go over a quick tutorial here on how to set up the magic add-on, uh, which is by Shadex on the forums, not Shadex, not really sure how it's pronounced. Anyway, um, as you can see I've got a little top-down controller here which is pretty groovy, you can fight punch around, and then when we hit this button we cast a nice little bolt, and you know what, we're just going to go and shoot it at this guy here. See you later! So there you go, now I'll show you quickly how to put that together. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of jump into our scene. Uh, we're going to come up with our little character. Here he is, groovy guy. Uh, the first thing you need to do is chuck on the uh, spell system input and magic spawn setup scripts, which are available on the forum. Uh, you'll need to create them um, from scratch and chuck them on. Uh, you'll need to also make the magic spawn transform, which is in, uh, I've put it in this test two script. I don't think it needs to go there, but I'll just put it there anyway and the magic spawn point, so the magic spawn setup will be where the actual spell comes from and if we click on that transform you can find it here and I've got it sitting out the front of my character a little bit which I might move that back because it seems to appear a bit too far in front anyway, uh, so you need those three things on the character itself then these ones here will have their own little numbers in them just put one, two, three, four and five in there uh, and that this will correlate to the magic attacks when you get them uh, next thing you'll want to do is jump over to your animator Find the full body and place in the new state, uh, what is it, substate machine. Uh, call it whatever you want, magic's easy, makes it easier to remember where it is. Open that up and then you'll need to create a state here, which is the empty one. I'm just going to delete that and I'll show you what I've done with this. Um, so I've named this one Arcane Bolt and I'm using the Arcane Spell. Just picked a um, spellcast um, uh, animation that I've got to play as the animation, so that's the action that the, uh, the player will be uh, and animating out when we cast the spell. Uh, then we need to add the magic attack behavior script on there. Um, this one here you can pretty much do up as a C sharp script, just make sure you copy the right stuff inside it and it'll save it as a behavior. Um, then you drag it onto here or you can click add behavior, find the script and put it in. Now the particle effect, so the hand particle effect, um, this is the particle effect that you want to have on the uh, the player model whether it's casting it via the hands or via the feet or wherever you want to actually have the magic effect um, spawn. Not the actual projectile itself if you're making a fire bolt like I am or an arcane bolt, um, but this is just the, the cool magical effects that you can do. You don't have to have it, you can um, always leave it out if you want it just to have the particle effect itself from the projectile. Anyway, uh, I've got the aura ring that I'm going to put it says aura arcane feet because it's just the same um, setup that I'm doing there. I'm just going to click on that. So if you have a look here, um, I've altered some of the settings. Um, this one here is pretty much just the particle uh, straight to itself. I don't think I've added... No, I haven't added anything extra onto that particle effect because it's not um, actually going to be doing any damage. It's just a cool, neat effect. So back to this now. Um, spell particle effects. Uh, this is one that I think is supposed to go at the base of the character or if you're using um, the uh, magic physics for the spell, uh, if you're creating like a an area of effect spell that casts from your player, you'd want to fill this one out with the special effects for it um, and then the yeah, physics. Um, point 0.3, point 0.9 uh, pretty good values for the effect to sort of work in time with when it's casting the um, spell. Uh, the projectile itself gets cast at the end of the uh, animation for me, I'm not sure when I've slowed it down, sometimes it doesn't actually spawn at all, so I've just got it set to 1, that should be fine. Um, I've put in an empty FX here, this is actually just an empty game object, there's nothing on it um, and that's just so I don't want anything to spawn at that time but you can't leave it blank with none because that will give you an error so you just fill it with an empty um, thing now we're coming down to the last one here which is the actual projectile itself that's going to be shot out so this is the um, uh, the object that's going to be spawned in front of the character at the magic uh, spawn and that's that point there so this is going to spawn at the magic spawn and then fly out in the direction that the character is facing. Um, so I'll just click on that and I'll show you. This is a prefab I've made already. So I've just grabbed one of my particle effects and added a few things on top of it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add, um, see this is the, the base level one so it doesn't actually have any of the um, particle system effects on it. Uh, they all exist inside here. And it's already got a trail, arcane orb, point light, all that sort of stuff. Um, so on the, the base though, I'm actually doing this thing. It's got the audio source playing. Uh, got the destroy game object script, you need to put that on there and give it a delay time, so how long your fireball is actually going to last. Three is a pretty good number, it gets to the edge of the screen at least, um, a little bit further even. 
Um, the part, uh, sorry, the next one is the Magic System Projectile script. That's what you need when you're using a projectile, which we are for this fireball or arcane ball. Um, particle on collision. That's the first one. That one here is actually uh, the the effect that you want to play once it hits something. So I've got Arc uh, Arcane Impact Tiny because that's just the matched up um, uh, one that comes in the pack that I've got for the projectile. Uh, whoops, come back to this. Next we've got speed. Ten's a pretty good speed. It's, uh, it doesn't fly out super fast, but it's not super slow. Spell target's going to be none because um, I don't think that actually works at the moment. Uh, same as the always hit. That's not going to work. Collides with. So this is what you want everything for that um, particle effect to collide to. Now I've got it set to default enemy stop move. I should actually put boss in there too. Not that I'm, I don't have any bosses in my mission, but either way. Um, so this is everything that it will actually collide with. Everything else it will flow through and won't register as a hit. Um, I've got mine on transparent effects because as you'll probably see in the video when I run under something it turns transparent and it puts it to that layer so I need to have that ticked so I can still hit invisible buildings because I'd still want it to collide with them I just want to be able to see through them um, so same as stop move because uh, that's another one that might um, you might have some blocks in there which are going to stop some of the movement and you might want it to go you can have that on or off it doesn't really matter so just choose here which layers you actually want it to collide with uh, the height adjust, you set that to 1 and that should come out pretty much right on the point that you've got. If you set it to 1.5 it'll push it up slightly a bit um, to go to head height which is uh, what Shaddix has uh, said in some of his videos. Um, that'd be good for if you want to actually have something that goes for the head or if you want to set something shorter so it only goes towards the legs if you want something to crawl across the ground. Um, you could do it that way uh, and that way you only need the one magic spawn which is pretty much central to your character and you can just adjust it from there. Uh, layer. I'm not actually sure what this one does. I think this is what layer it actually spawns the um, the object on, which should be default. Default will be zero in your layer. If you actually go to add layer, yeah, you can see built-in layer zero default. So it's picking what layer there it is there to spawn that. Um, don't hold me to that. That might not be true. As far as I'm aware, that's what that means. I haven't looked into that. Next thing we want to add is the sphere collider. Uh, just chuck this on uh, with mine and it automatically came up the right size for the fireball because it, it knew what was in there. So it's just spawned that um, that circle. I've popped the radius up. I think it was actually 0.3 so I've put it as um, 1. Um, we need that. We also need a rigid body and you want to make sure that this use gravity is turned off. Um, what normally happens is if you do use gravity, even if you set it down to a really low mass, it's still actually going to um, just fall straight to the ground pretty much. It'll, it'll go maybe about a metre or two in front of your character and fall to the ground. So kind of cool if you did want to have some sort of weird sort of grenade lobbing effect. Um, otherwise keep that turned off and it will just fly in a straight line for a fireball. That's what you want to have. Uh, next one is the V object damage script. You can put this on here or on the um, uh, the impact effect that you've got. Uh, it depends on what kind of impact you're going for. With my one, the impact, I just want that as like a cool little fancy little splash damage thing. It, it doesn't actually damage. It's just a, a cool looking effect. So I've actually got it on here. So once this collides with the player or the um, sorry the, the target object, it'll apply the damage. I've set it up. Um, I've named the attack name Arcane Bolt. Uh, the reason I've done that is because with the spell, um, I actually want it to have something. And later on, I might in one of the other animated controllers, I might put a reaction to the attack Arcane Bolt and make it something different. So maybe um, like the fire bolt, uh, the player uh, sorry that they might have an animation of the person trying to put out a fire on their chest. So you want, you want to have that there, you can name the attack, it doesn't really matter, it's not actually going to affect anything, it's still going to hit the um, the enemy and the enemy is going to react. Just later on when you put something in there, you can actually put in a name and it will trigger that reaction. Um, damage value 25, stamina block cost, um, yeah, all that stuff is your, your basic damage options. Uh, ignore defense because it's a magic spell, I don't want people to be able to block it with a shield or their arms. Um, activate ragdoll because basically it's cool when they get knocked around. Um, Oh, you can turn that off, uh, but then with magic physics, it's you sort of want to keep it on anyway because the physics will affect it. Um, tags, you need to make sure this is normally set to zero, so you want to make sure it's set to um, enemy and anything else you want to damage. So if you've got a layer um, with objects on it that uh, have their own um, damage uh, system, so like you know, if you've got boxes that break, if you've got doors that break, anything like that that you want to actually have affected, make sure you um, increase the tags and chuck them in on this element. Uh, list here. And the method on collision enter, on trigger enter, on collision enter. I've got it on collision because I'm actually using this as a trigger so it will actually collide and once it figures out, sorry, figures out that it's collided it'll hurt the enemy. Um, the next one is the magic physics script. Um, so I've got use explosion because yeah I basically want this to explode at the end um, 
It's got a radius of two. It's only a small explosion because it is just a little bolt. It's not actually like a giant um, explosive fireball, uh, which I will do another time and I'll upload a video of how to get that effect. Um, the power is 25. I don't want it to be super powerful. It is enough to knock the, car, the enemy models down. Um, I think it's just enough to overpower them. I think their power it might be 20, I think, is their limit that I can handle. So if you're under that, it'll only knock them back a little bit. Um, the height is 3. Uh, yeah, radius and height. I'm not really sure what the height does. I'll have to ask Shadex about that or just watch his videos again uh, explain that one. Anyway, you can just leave that as that. Uh, force mode is force and the apply force layer is enemy. I want it to apply on the enemy. If I wanted it to be a larger explosion and I want it to knock items around, if I've got the items on a layer like default or anything like that, um, I can tag that here. And then of course if I tag that, so anything that's on the default layer or on the enemy layer that has a rigid body and um, physics applied to it will actually be affected by this force. So same if you're using grenade effects, things like that, you want um, a few of the objects around to, to be done, but I don't want any of that. I just want the enemy to be affected by this. So that's pretty much it uh, now that that's put in. Um, oh, sorry, no, actually i got to do it up here. Uh, so the any state, once you come in here, um, it needs to be linked in with this. Now you've got magic to ID and magic attack one. Uh, if you go to the parameters tab here on the animator and scroll down, um, this is using Melee 2.2a, I believe, because I was testing it out to make sure it worked because I was having a, a few issues on 2.2b. Um, um, you need to add in these extra uh, parameters here. So this one here is magic ID, and I believe it was an int. Yes, correct. Oh, I'll just delete that. There we go. Um, so you need to add an int, call it magic ID, and then you need to act, uh, add a trigger and call it magic attack one. So once you've added those into the parameter field there, you can click on this and then in the conditions, yep, just add a condition, scroll down the list to your magic ID or magic attack one and add them in. I'm just gonna take that off. So as you can see here, yep, so if it equals one, then it wants to activate this animation. Um, that'll come into play later, so I'll show you. And when it comes back out, you need to connect. So make a transition to full body st uh, state machine and then null. You want to select that and that's your outside transition. So that is pretty much all you need to run that one there. And I'll go back to the scene. Now, as I was saying before, um, the reason we're calling it magic ID one is when we come down to the input script here, got magic ID one. So you've got up to five different spells that you can cast. Um, you can probably add in more if, you, if I had a look at the script there might be a way to sort of dynamically change them I'll figure that out, they might be coming later, I don't know um, yeah so when you press the button that corresponds to one it's going to go yep magic ID one is slot number one so now if we play the game as you can see we run around and I can go through left click um, and right click to block all that sort of stuff uh, running around so as you can see I've got the transparency effects going on um, I can, excuse me, cast it straight ahead of me, which goes off this way, but I really want it to target that, so I can try and align it as best I can. Uh, it's not really going to make it, so I'm going to hit the tab button to auto lock on to the nearest enemy. Um, you can actually put the lock on control, I'll show you here, lock on target control script. This works uh, even in the isometric camera view, um, which uh, is really awesome because that means that I can use this to target. Uh, I don't have any of the images or the um, canvas on to have the sprite lock onto the enemy so I know which one I'm locked on, but there's only one enemy here so I know it's him. So now when I click on here, I press F1, it's going to shoot the ball right at him and he's going to go, ouch, that hurt, fall down, get back up again. Now here's the thing with the lock on, is that now that I've knocked him down, um, the lock on has failed. So it, it's basically lost the target because he's fallen down. So now that he's back on, F1 again. And now you can see I'm still moving around in free roam thing. Um, if you set it so it doesn't actually knock him down, uh, or if it doesn't apply the ragdoll effect, uh, it pretty much should stay on him until you've killed him. Um, but just be aware that, yeah, the ragdoll effect at the moment is causing that. Anyway, I hope this helps. Um, if you are having some troubles, we have seen a couple of um, errors come up uh, on the forums and people having the world spawn um, zero, zeroed out, so the, the, uh, the prefab spawning from here. Not really sure what causes that. Um, it did happen to me in one of the other games, but it wasn't actually the projectile. It was just the uh, magic spell effect that I had coming up on my hand. Um, yeah, so there's a few issues like that. If you do have those issues, um, comment here or I'll jump on the forums. And uh, yeah, we should be able to lend a hand and get uh, and work through some of the problems. All right, thanks for watching.